All right, so here I'm going to make a copy of a existing teach pendant program. So I have this teach pendant program here called House 1-3, which as you can see on the screen over here, it just uh, traces around a shape of a house. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on the next button and press F1 for copy. Okay, now notice to get to that, I had to press, um, I had to press select to get to the list of the program. So I press select, I find which program I want to make a copy of, hit next, and then I can press F1 copy, and then now I can come in here and I can uh, create a name. So I'm just going to call this, uh, Okay, house one, two, three. And so, and then I'll just press enter and it says make copy, I'll select yes. And so now you can see there's the new program, house one, two, three. So I'm gonna move up to that, press enter and I'm in here and I can edit this. Now this program here is an exact copy of the previous program and I'm going to come over here. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do with this is if you look at the uh, program numbers, I want to well what I want to do first I guess is uh, to simply just uh, test the program. So I'm just gonna turn my teach pendant on and hit forward and just run it through here and just test the program, okay? And so what you can see there is that we started out up here in this home area and then moved down and started traversing around the uh, program. So one of the things I guess I'm going to do here is change my speeds and slow them down a little bit so that uh, we can kind of watch it move. So I'm going to change my speeds down to just, I don't know, I guess uh, 300 millimeters per second or about 10% of actual speed. Okay, depending on whether it's a joint motion, motion type or a linear type motion type and so I'm just going to run this again um, remember when you start from a different point it's going to just ask you you know is the robot arm in a safe spot is effectively what this question is asking you I'm going to say yes and then I can hit forward again and then it will run through the program so you can see now it's it's still running uh, through the pattern but it's running a little bit slower All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of experiment with like copying and pasting. So we have these lines here. We have the uh, point two is the lower left corner down here of my house shape. And then point three, point four, point five, and point six. Now I just I wanna demonstrate the copy and paste features of the program here. So if we go to next and I choose edit command and I'm going to copy, so I'm going to select number three and I'm going to select, I'm going to press F2 for copy. Now, depending on which ver version of the teach pendant you have, it may actually say select right now, which actually makes more sense because you can see it says select lines and then you press F2 to select the lines and then you press F2 a second time then to do the copy. So right now F2 is labeled as copy. This is with the older teach pendant. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I move the mouse to the line that I want to start my copy on. All right. And so that's really what I'm selecting, which line to start the copy on. Then I'm going to press F2. And notice it still says copy here, which is a little misleading, but... I'm going to then select and I'm going to copy these lines two, three, four, five, six. 
and then I'm going to press F2 again, and now I've copied those six lines. So I've copied those six lines in the program. Okay, so before I actually get to pasting, I want to just um, cover some details about this program. So we've, we've made this copy of this program, House 1, 2, 3, and I've, I've copied, I've made a copy of the lines 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now what that means is, where is that copy? That copy is basically in the clipboard. So if you're familiar with like Windows terminology and making a copy of something in Windows, what, you've, what I've done is copied it to, to what is equivalent as the clipboard in and Windows and so it's not there's no other copy in my program it's copied over to this buffer to this clipboard area waiting for me then to paste it so I can paste these lines either into my current program or I can paste them into a different program now before that I'm going to I just want to look at the program now one thing is that your robots uh, all the FANUC robots actually have a built-in web server. And so if you know the IP of the robot, you can just type that IP address into the, your browser, and you can then uh, view program files and listing of programs. And so uh, if you're using the RoboGuide software, you use a special IP, which is kind of like the nickname, you know, like we give ourselves nickname, me, myself, and I uh, for computers and any networking device. The kind of me, myself, and I sort of um, name it for that is the IP address 127.0.0.1. So what this is going to do then is connect me to the web server running on my local device, which is the robot running in RoboGuide. So that's where I'm connected now. And I'm going to scroll down here and you can see it says Teach Pendant Programs Available. So if I click on that, you can see the uh, Teach Pendant Programs and there's actually two copies of those. So remember the, the copy of the program I created was called House123. And so notice there's a file here, house123.tp. Now this is the teach pendant program that I've created that we actually have showing over here in our, our teach pendant. Now this house123.tp file is a binary file. So if I had like clicked on this to try to download it, it just, it, it just asked me to download it. Um, and it, it's actually coming up and saying, do you want to play this in your media player? Because, it, you know, Windows doesn't know what this file is, technically. Because it's a .tp, which means it's the binary program uh, that I, I created there or made a copy of the House 1.3 program. So um, we could click on this and download this and just save this. And then we would have, that's like a quick and easy way to actually make us, uh, to save a program onto your Windows machine from your actual robot. Okay, but uh, if we click on the other hand, there's the .ls. The .ls is an ASCII version of this program. So it's not actually an executable um file that, that the teach pendant or the robot controller can actually execute, but it's a, an ASCII copy that we can click on to view the program. So here is the program. There's uh, our comment information and also information about the creation date last modified is all here. And um, so notice that it says like the file name is house one three because that's actually where I copied it. So the program is house one two three, but it, it has this file name of the original program in here. So this is just uh, up here at the top is just some general information whether I turned on write only 
or I mean read only or whether I can edit the program and all that kind of stuff. So now, but if we come down here, we can see here is our actual program. So here's those actual programs, but what I wanted to show you is below the actual program are the points. So we can see here is that original point one, and you can see that it's part of user frame one, tool frame one, and you can see it's X, Y, Z, yaw, pitch, and roll values. Okay, so this is point one in the program. Then you can see this is point two in the program. And this is point 0.3 and point 0.4, point 0.5, and point 0.6. So there's actually this program just has six points in it. But you can see when, when you click on this .ls file, you can actually see here each point, what frames it's those points are tied to, and what the actual values of those points are. So all this information is stored within the program within that .tp file. And again, the ls file is just an ASCII version of this. But by looking at this, we can see certain things in here, like the fact that, you know, um, the lower left corner is at 20x from my user frame and 10y. And then the, um, the next point in there, it's still at X at 20 millimeters, but the Y is now at 90 millimeters. And uh, the Z for both of those happen to be zero, right? Actually, the Z for all of these is zero because it's right down on that, that uh, user frame matches the angle of the actual frame. But we can see all these points in here. So we can see the X and the Y and the Z. So now I'm going to come over to my teach pendant and I am going to come down below here to my end and I'm going to select paste. Now when you select paste, boy look at that, there's three choices, logic, position ID, and position, and then you could cancel out. But notice here there's a greater than, and so I can actually hit next and find five more possibilities. So copying those lines into that clipboard area is very simple. But pasting, you actually have eight possibilities for pasting. All right, so I hit next and go back to the first three. So the first one is logic. And so if I paste logic, I'm just going to uh, select F2 now. I'm in the middle of the paste. And so I press F2, it pastes the logic. So notice what happens here when I copied my program I had line six is the first line I copied, which was a joint movement with 10% speed and fine termination. And then a 300 speed, 300 speed, and then two more joints. So when I paste that, you notice that those paste are there, but now there's no numbers associated with those points. Okay, so there's no actual points in there. So what I would have to do is jog the robot to where I would want it to go. And then go and do a touch up. And I could then jog the robot and then I could come over here and do a touch up and it will assign that a new number. Now I didn't actually jog the robot and the robot was sitting at 0.5 and so that's why the at symbol is up here at line 9 and at 7. So 0.7 now, 0.7 is a different program, a different point in the program. So notice over here, uh, this was the original program. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new tab in my browser and go back to my 127 and I'm going to come down here to the teach pendant programs and I'm going to open this uh, house 123 program again the ASCII version of it so now notice here here are my lines uh, lines 14 15 16 and 17 still don't have anything associated with them but line 13 has a brand new point of 0.7 but notice if you look at point 0.7, point 0.7 is identical to point 0.5. It's 170 in the X, 90 in the Y, and 0 in the Z. 
And then the yaw is minus 158.159. Pitch is minus 8.6. And roll is minus 125. So 0.5 is a unique point in the program, but it is in the exact same point in space as 0.7. And that's kind of what the at symbol is telling us. It's the exact same point in space, yet in the program, it's a completely different point. All right. And so then I can come in and modify 0.7 by either jogging the robot. You know, if we pop back over here, we could say, hey, let's just jog our robot. And that's going to make this point over here. Um, oops, I wasn't on the robot when I did that. So I actually modified my 0.5 instead of my 0.7. Um, but um, so if we then come back and we look at our browser again, now you're going to have to refresh this screen. But if I refresh the screen, you can see now 0.5 is a completely different point in space than 0.7 is now. Okay. So we have, in the program, we have ID numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, for this program at the moment. So we have unique ID numbers, but those unique ID numbers may or may not be unique points in space. All right, so, but when you paste logic, when you do a logic paste, all you get is... The lines, you get the motion type, you get whether it's a point or a position register, and you get the velocity, and you get the speed, and any options that might be associated with that motion, but you don't get any points actually assigned. All right, so that's the logic. Now, if we go back over here, I'm going to come back to the end, I'm going to go to next, and I'm going to choose paste again. Now, I've already done the copy. So when I did that copy, that copy there is still in the clipboard. So when I come back and I select copy, I don't have to copy the lines again. I can simply go to paste again. And this time, I'm going to paste the position IDs. And so now I get an exact copy. If we go back and look up here, we had two, three, four, five, and six. And you look at the speeds and you look at the motion instructions, uh, the, the terminations and the motion types and everything is exactly identical. All right. So when I, uh, well, all it did was copy this, these lines and paste them exactly as they were. So it copied the five lines that I had in the clipboard and pasted them exactly using the same ID number. Now, since they're the same ID number, it didn't create new points over here. All it did was say, hey, we already know point one is here, or, well, I guess I didn't paste for point one, but we already know that point two is here. We're just pasting it in again. Uh, so we're going to go back to that point. So it's not a new point in the program. It's just that we're going to go to that point a second time in the program. All right. And the same for point three, four, five, and six. Okay. So uh, if we hit refresh here again, um, you know, I, I didn't get any new points. I just have two new lines, or not two new lines, but a whole new set of these five lines, which is repeating what I was doing here on lines 6 through 10, I'm going to repeat those now on lines 18 through 22. So that is the paste of the ID number. Now, if we come back down to end again and I edit command to go to copy. Now, again, I've still got these lines are still in the clipboard. So I don't actually need to do a new copy. If I do, I'll overwrite the clipboard. But I'm going to paste position this time. So this time I'm going to paste the position. And what you notice here is that, remember up here, uh, 
Um, we, we pasted two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're pasting eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And so if we come over here and we look at this, we're going to see that point eight is the same as point two. And we're going to see that point nine, 20, and 90 is the same as point three. And then we're going to see that point four, 90, and 140 is the same as point 10. All right. And so what it did was it gave them brand new numbers. So they're new points in the program. So they're physically unique points in the program. But at least currently, unless I touch them up, they are the exact same points in space as points two, three, or four, whichever one they were originally associated with. All right. So when we do a paste, if you paste the position ID, you get a brand new number. Or excuse me, if you paste the position ID, you get a new line that just goes and goes back to that same point in space. But if you paste position, you get a brand new number. So uh, I'm going to cancel that here. I'm going to do a paste. All right. Now, you, if you do reverse logic, what it does is it reverses the order, but it puts the dot, dot, dot in there. All right. So you see here, so when I reverse the order, it reversed the order. So we had the one joint. It's, you know, the, the original code here was starting at point two and it was a joint movement at 10 and then three and four were three hundredths millimeters per second. So what it did is it reversed the order but left the points dot 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 so the points are currently unused. And of course if you tried to run the program here any place where it ran into points that are unused would just fail. All right, but uh, and then if we but it, uh, our POID, so when we paste uh, our logic, paste the motion instructions, but it pastes them in reverse order. If I do RPID, again, it's going to paste them in reverse ID number order. So it's going to paste, the, or paste them in reverse order, but use the exact same points that are already in the program. It's not going to create new points. On the other hand, if you paste using reverse POS, so if we choose uh, reverse um, POS, which is actually F4 here, it gives them brand new numbers. So they're the exact same points in space, but in reverse order with brand new numbers. All right. Now, if we look, we actually also have two other ones, F3, which is a reverse motion and F5, which is RM reverse motion. So F3 and F5 are reverse motion. The PID, the position ID or the position will do the same as the other P position ID or position instructions. But notice here when I do a reverse motion position ID number three, that it not only changes it not only changes the, you know, it puts, it puts the points in reverse order. So instead of going two, three, four, five, six, that's now going six, five, four, three, two. However, notice that the speeds and the motion types, uh, the, the motion instructions have actually changed also. So it, it um, it's doing a reverse motion. So what it's trying to do, RM means it's trying to re go backwards through the path in the exact manner that it went forward. And so your instructions, instead of simply the instructions being reversed, 
it's actually trying to reverse the actual motion that the arm followed to get there. All right, so when we do a copy and paste, we get several different choices of copy and paste. All right, so now I still have these lines. Remember, my original lines were actually way up the beginning of this program, but my original lines that were copied were six, seven, eight, nine, um, and 10 here, which gave me points two, three, four, five, and six. And so far, I've been pasting them down into the same program. Now, let's, let's come over here. I'm going to press Select to go to back to my programs. And I'm going to hit Next to get back here. I'm going to create a brand new program. All right, so this is just going to be a new program. I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to call this Copy Example. Okay, so I'm just hitting the uh, letters here to create a copy example. And I'm just going to do, I guess, E. So I'll press this till I get an E. And then I'll press F4 till I get an X. All right, so this is just my copy example. So I'm going to come in here and create my copy example, which is a brand new program. So now that I created this brand new program, I'm going to come Edit Command, Paste, now, I've, again, in my clipboard, I've already pasted those five lines with points two through six. If I paste the logic in here, um, then it would just be like it was before because there were no points. But watch what happens if I actually paste position IDs. All right, so when I paste position IDs into this new program, it looks perfectly fine. Look at these. It's like, hey, look, here's... Here's these points. However, if we come over and we look at these points, notice that they are uninitialized. Everything's all starred out. Okay, so when you paste into a new program, these uh, points may or may not exist. So let me just kind of show you that again. Well, let, let me go to the browser and just look at these points for a minute. So if we flip back to the browser a minute, and I'm going to flip back to my listing, I'm going to refresh my listing to pick up this new program copy, copy EX. And so now notice here, I, I have code that says go to point two, three, four, five, and six, which is the same code I had in the other program. But now all the XYZs, y'all pitches and rolls are all start out. So the program is invalid. And so if I actually tried to run this program, I get uninitialized data, right? Because it can't run this program because I haven't told it where these points are. So the points exist in this new program, but they're undefined. Now remember, we can undo. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to Edit Command, select 8 to undo. And the undo did the paste. So I pasted in five lines, so undo deleted those five lines. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to create a point. I'm going to just create a couple of points in here. And then I'm going to delete the first two because I just want to leave point three. Okay, to illustrate a point here. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to delete, select two, come down and select those two lines and I'm going to delete. So I'm just going to delete. So now my program, if I come back here and refresh my program, It has one line in it. So the program has one line, which is point three, which is a physical point in space. So you see the X, Y, Z are all filled out. It's a real point in space. It's defined. So I could actually run this program, and it would move the arm. Come back here. I don't even know where I'm at at the moment. But if I run this program... Okay, I, there we go. All right, so I wanted to just jog the robot here somewhere. So here, here's the robot, 
And so now I'm going to press forward, and it's, it's just a one line, so it's simply going to move to this point three. Okay. And I think, I, let's see, I need to make sure I abort all programs. Okay. And for some reason, it doesn't seem like it actually wants to move to point three here. All right, so I'm um, not quite sure why it, RoboGuide may need rebooted here, but I'm going to try to go ahead and paste though now. So now notice this program does have a point three in it. All right, so the program does have a point three, which is defined. So now I'm going to paste in my five lines again using the position ID. And now notice when you do this, Okay, so I pasted those in there, and so now if I hit refresh and look at this program one more time, notice that point two, four, five, and six are undefined, but it's using the point three that was defined in my program already. All right, so it's using the point the P3 that was already defined in the program, which may not be where I wanted it. So you have to be very careful when you're pasting in motion instructions that you, especially if you're pasting them into a different program, right? This, um, they, they could be associated with a different user frame. They could be different points in space than you really wanted. So anytime you're doing this, you definitely have to make sure that you test your program carefully. All right, so let's try another paste here. So I'm going to um, go to previous. I'm going to edit command, and I'm going to undo this paste. All right, so now remember, I have a point three. And now I'm going to paste in my copy from my original program. If we come back to the original program, right, I copied points two, three, four, five, and 6, which were well-defined in the other program. I'm now going to paste those using the position instruction. So now when I paste these using the position instruction, notice that it actually pasted them before my point three line. But notice that it started numbering at number one. All right, so in the original program, this is the original program, Point two was labeled lower left corner. Now, in this new program, point one is labeled lower left corner. And then point three was the next line, which was a 300 millimeter velocity speed. But now in the program here, that's point two. And then if you look, the next 300 line instruction was here at point four, and uh, it was a it was three in the program. Yeah, you had a three hundred and three hundred. So we had point two. Uh, point one was a brand new point, and point two is a point. So what what I'm trying to say here, I'm not saying it very well, is that. Point three was already used, right? We already had point three being used um, go back to this. okay, so I pasted this in here. We already had point three being used. So when I pasted in points two, three, four, five, and six using this new method, this was the previous, this was the position ID. Okay, when I pasted the position ID, it just simply reused point three and it didn't create a new point. But when I pasted using the position, as we're looking at here now, I pasted using the position, it actually gives it a new number. So now I've got one, two, four, five, six, and then 
0.3. So it gave them all new numbers. Okay, so it, it pasted the position. So if we refresh this now, we're going to see, and if you go back in the video compare, right, 0.1 is the point that was 0.2 before. And 0.3 before is now 0.2. And 0.4 that was 0.4 before is still 0.4. All right. And so this 0.3 is this oddball that I, I shifted and, the, you know, the numbers are all out of whack here. So what it did was it said, hey, 0.3 is already in use. And so therefore it skipped that in the numbering. So it started numbering at 1 because 1 was free, 2 was free, but 3 was in use. So it didn't, when I did a position paste, it did not use point three, it, it created new ID numbers for the points and it, it pasted the actual position values. The X, Y, Z, yaw, pitch, and roll as brand new points. All right. So now um, remember though, that if we look, oh, I can't go backwards on there, but if I paste, so let me just do a paste again over here. So, these points in this program, these are brand new points in the program, and they, we pasted the position, and the position was well defined, so when I paste it into the new program, it assigns them any free numbers. One and two were free, so to assign them those numbers, three was already being used, so it didn't use that, and it gave them four, five, and six. But the points were already defined, so this program could run. However, if I, I'm going to undo this, okay, so I'm going to undo this, so I just have my predefined point 3, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to paste the position ID again, just to discuss this one more time, so I'm going to uh, post paste position ID. So now if I look at this, let me open a new tab for it. Okay, so teach pennant programs, copy EX. All right, so now notice again um, that I had, I pasted two, three, four, five, and six. So I selected the ID number, so it pasted those, but the problem was that the only predefined point was point three. Point three is defined in space. All the rest of them are uninitialized. And so the program can't run at all. And point three may not be where it was in the other program. So you have to be very careful, especially when you're pasting into other programs. But as I demonstrated here, you can paste lines of code copied from one teach pendant program into a completely different program. All right, so, but when we paste, there are eight different choices of pasting. There's logic, position ID, position, reverse logic, reverse position ID, uh, reverse um, position, reverse motion position ID, and reverse motion position. So there's eight different choices when you decide to paste on which which of the lines you want to paste. And they all have just slightly different effects on exactly what they do.